Hey, we are the heat changers. And are everywhere. The other day I was telling you that I was considering traveling to Greece to attend a couple of industry events. Well, I will, and I'm very excited about it. I was in Athens and a couple of islands on holidays six years ago, and I loved it. Now I'm really looking forward to meeting the Greek solar thermal industry in their capital city. That's so great, Marcel. I mean, getting to go to a beautiful sunny place and also network with people who are also passionate about this thing that you love so much. That's the best. And you've mentioned other opportunities for networking too. It makes me think that the solar season has really kicked off. Indeed, many industry trade shows, conferences and events are happening this time of the year. Also, the high season for solar projects has started. Hopefully, this will also be a year when records are beaten in terms of energy generation from renewables, although we need it more in winter. There are many things happening right now, so it's crazy busy. A lot of change will come in June. There will be the EU Sustainable Energy Week that takes place in Brussels and also online. So this is the biggest event uh, in, uh, in Europe addressing policy and sustainable energy. We will be present there at Solar Heat Europe. We are co-organizing policy session with, uh, with other associations that will be addressing the Energy Performance for Buildings Directive. And of course, we'll bring the perspective of the solar heat sector. For us will be the, the solar Monday, the renovation. Right now, the current rate of renovation of buildings in Europe is very low. It's like 1% per year. The idea is to improve that. So in order to have energy performance buildings, we also need to have renovated buildings. This is related to the Fit for 55 package that Alexandra explained in a previous episode. I remember way back from the start of the season. The overall goal of the EU is to be climate neutral by 2050. And the first milestone is to reduce emissions by at least 55% by 2030. And, as a consequence, several legislations are being modified accordingly. There is the, the overall renewables target, and the agreement is on a binding target, so that has to happen, which is 42.5% of energy from renewable sources in the overall energy mix by 2030. So almost half <laughs> has to be renewables by 2030. This is very important news because the current EU level target is 32%. Now the next step will be four member states. Each member state, so each country, will need to increase their national contributions set in their integrated uh, national energy and climate plans, which they have to update in this year and uh, in the next year in order for all the countries to collectively achieve this new target. Another target in the Renewable Energy Directive is the heating and cooling target, which <laughs> of course was a focus for us. There will be a gradual increase in, uh, in renewables for uh, heating and cooling with a binding increase of 0.8% per year at national level until 2026 and then 1.1% from 2026 to 2030. Aha, I heard the magic word, heating. You're right. Now that I am more aware of the relevance that heating has in our daily lives, I do realize that in casual conversations about energy and climate change, we really only refer to power and electric needs. Exactly. And we need to see the big picture in order to succeed in the energy transition from fossil to renewables. If we leave the heat sector behind, we are missing a big part. At least half of the energy that we use is for heating, remember? And also here there is a first good step, which is the so-called energy efficiency. This means more or less something like doing the same with less energy, because the best energy is not fossil or renewable, but the one that we don't need. The main target of the directive is to reduce the final energy consumption at the EU level by 11.7% in 2030. There is another article which was actually focused for us, 
which says that the countries have to require regional and local authorities to prepare heating and cooling plants in cities above uh, 45,000 people. And then another one, which is also um, kind of related to this, this is not a new article, this was already in the Energy Efficiency Directive, but it can be implemented better, so this is good to know for, let's say, our future work, is that all member states should have a comprehensive assessment of the heating and cooling demand. Let's say we tick the box for having more ambitious goals. The next thing is to have a level playing field for all renewable energy technologies, as they say in Brussels. But of course, the journey is not over, right? So now the implementation of these directives, it's obvious that will bring significant benefits to our sector, but also to uh, the other uh, uh, renewable energy industries. And uh, of course, they are highly necessary given the time that we have left to, let's say, to address the climate crisis. Now, the proposed targets within the directives will drive the growth of the solar heat sector, both in small scale and the large scale. But further on, it's crucial to ensure that solar heat is recognized and its adoption increases at the member state level. One of the important messages that we need to get across to at the national level is that by supporting solar heat and by deploying more solar heat installations, the member states can make significant progress in meeting more of the targets that I was uh, explaining before. Because if you implement solar thermal, you can uh, tick the box for the overall renewables target, you can tick the box for heating and cooling, you can tick the box for district heating and cooling for industry, and even the one for energy efficiency. Wow, okay. So it sounds like solar thermal really has a big diversity of purposes and applications. Now that you mentioned, diversity is a concept that we can definitely apply in this sector. In previous episodes, we've heard the opinion of solar thermal manufacturers in Sweden and Austria. This time, we will go Mediterranean, just to get in the mood for my business trip. We have become a leader in worldwide level as we are offering solutions which perfectly match to the needs of its market. Our products are fully certified in many different countries, ensuring end users for the offer quality and efficiency of the products and the solution they will choose. So, independently if there are governmental support on each country, we should always think that our technology is not something new. There is practically, we say there is no risk. It is a proven technology with uh, good results. For more than 50 years, uh, users have, have understood the benefits of uh, solar thermal products and the energy saving which can be achieved. For us, the governmental support is not so important. Of course, it helps a lot when, let's say, all these are combined together. We see some kind of boom in specific markets, but definitely is not our priority. We set up targets according to the country where we can really help people and uh, support them uh, as much as we can. He is Harry Michalopoulos, Managing Director of Sampler, one of the first companies in Greece in the field of manufacturing solar thermal systems, founded in 1975. With more than 45 years of experience, it manufactures products that meet the modern needs of consumers, both in the residential and industrial sector. Following the requirements of the Greek and international market, the company is constantly expanding its activities to new certified products, always following the saying, only the best is good enough. It's so helpful to get a truly European overview. I can imagine that the business strategy in Mediterranean solar companies differs a lot from that of companies in Central Europe or Scandinavia. I mean, you all have so much sun to begin with. In summer, we, have, we continuously develop innovative technologies uh, for the production of sustainable products. With all our efforts, uh, we communicate to our customers about the advantages of the implementation of this strategy in our products. And the most important thing channel is uh, social media. And number two, we are organizing some uh, events. And uh, in, especially in these events, we are also trying to, can I say, involve some, uh, some other organizations, for example, Greenpeace, 
Personally, I, I want to participate as, uh, as much as I can in order to promote uh, our technology. That's why I really want to be as active as possible. The solar water heater is uh, an affordable technology. So we really participate and we are really a part of the solution of the energy poverty. We can offer our products to much more people than any other technology. We can say that we are aligned with the target zone of EU about the energy. We can really be part of uh, the solution of the energy crisis, which ar arrived, uh, let's say, one and a half year ago, in, uh, mainly in Europe. In terms of solar thermal installed capacity, Greece ranks sixth globally after China, Turkey, Germany, India and Brazil. Most importantly, it has one of the highest market penetration rate after Barbados, Cyprus, Israel and Austria. The Greek market annual growth rate in 2021 was 18%, one of the highest in those difficult pandemic times. The market is evolving from the typical segments of small hot water systems for dwellings and buildings to large-scale systems that meet a larger hot water demand, for instance, in hospitals, hotels and sports centers. According to an article from Solar Thermal World, domestic sales increased by 33% from 2014 to 2021 and exports tripled in the same period. We are really very proud that uh, we managed uh, in the middle of 2022 to complete the construction of our new factory in uh, Pilivyotias, uh, just 35 kilometers from Athens. During this year, we are uh, finalizing also our investment plan regarding uh, new automated production lines. So uh, we are expecting that uh, we will be able to reach a target of uh, more than 250,000 square meters of collectors and more than 50,000 solar tanks. Figures which are uh, really something like three, four times more comparing to our uh, current production capacity. We have reached uh, almost 80% of our uh, production to be exported in something like 48 countries in four continents. Three years ago, we just uh, reached more than 50% exports out of Europe. So, yes, the truth is that uh, number one uh, continent is Europe for us. Number two has become uh, America. Number three is uh, Asia. And number four is Africa. We have some uh, nice countries that we are active, for example, starting from uh, countries in the uh, Caribbean, in the United States, to Chile and Argentina, Vietnam or uh, South Korea. So the next target is Australia. Three facts about solar heating systems that you must know. Number one, with solar heating systems, you can get over three times more energy than with solar PV systems. Let's say you want to get 3 megawatt hour of heat a year, you would need 6.5 square meters only. If you'd rather install a PV system to get an equivalent power generation, you would require more than 15 square meters. By the way, 10 square meters of solar thermal collectors can save emissions equivalent to planting 140 trees. Number two, you can save around two tons of CO2 per year if you replace an oil-based heater with a solar water heating system to get your hot water and heating at home. This corresponds to more than one year of driving about 14,000 kilometers with a small car and with a fraction of the investment. Number three, the recyclability rate of solar heating systems exceeds 95%, including both the solar collector and the storage tank for your hot water. Besides, the collection process does not require special recycling means or channels. Solar thermal is a technology which, uh, let's say, belongs to the renewable energies. So it is, is 100% linked to circularity. We know very well that, uh, let's say, the resources in our planet uh, are uh, limited. So we are committed to establishing the circular economy as a sustainable future-oriented concept in the industry and to protect the earth uh, in this way. This is a kind of concept which is totally accepted, also understood by our customers, because at the end, people which really want to ensure the sustainability, they choose our technology, they choose our products. Uh, industrial users, for sure, 
uh, the priority is uh, how to reduce their uh, carbon dioxide emissions and in generally how to, to reduce their, their energy footprint. For end users is uh, quite a similar concept as uh, they are also thinking what they can do to protect the environment even by just a very small effort. Oh yeah, as a consumer, circularity is everywhere. It's in the reclaimed wood and my furniture. It's in my secondhand clothes. It's in the trees that get planted by my search engine. Yeah, it's very, very present everywhere in the consumer mindset. Solar heat is a technology. It's already available and proven. It's cost competitive. It generates direct energy in the form of hot water or steam. It's a local solution which brings not only environmental benefits through CO2 reduction, but also improves energy security and independence. And it comes with thermal storage, which can facilitate the integration with other technologies. I see. We need to understand the whole picture. That's so hard when you're not an expert. I wish everyone making that kind of decision had a competent advisor. It makes you think how much work there is to be done and how many opportunities there must be for people who might be looking to make a career change or or those who are about to enter the labor market. I totally agree that on each company we need all type of uh, skilled employees. We are a production, we are a factory, so uh, definitely priority is uh, engineers. But also we need uh, people which are uh, in, in finance uh, and uh, people in marketing because this is also very important. Uh, we are in a period that uh, everything is communicated by social media. Therefore, we need young people which are very specialized in uh, how to use uh, social media. Uh, we have to be sure that we have to invest in our employees. Uh, which is uh, very important, no matter the industry or company size. In our company, we have implemented training courses for our employees. And we have a motto here saying that uh, we have to make the good employee, we have to, to make best employee. For me, the most important is a uh, person should have a vision, should always think uh, out of the box. We really need uh, revolutionary solutions. The age is not priority, but... They have to think more revolutionary. As I said, there are many things happening, changes coming for the better, for a more sustainable future. And as an industry, we must be ready to seize the opportunity. Solar heat can be a game changer in, uh, in, the, in the decarbonization of heating and overall in driving the energy transition. But we have to work together. So let's work together to demonstrate the potential and the benefits of solar heat for a clean and for that sustainable energy future. I feel like I just learned so much about the big picture and how so many of the pieces come together, especially for consumers. Everything from legislation to private industry choices to consumer choices, and also, you know, the great opportunity for individuals to have economic prosperity because of the growth in this new industry. Yes, I'm leaving feeling very optimistic. Thank you. Have a great trip to Greece, Marisol. And... Are you ready to become a head changer? <laughs>